haven't done a talk in a while, haven't been out here in a long time. There's been some flooding. Uh, this part of the trail isn't shut down, but a lot of the rest of it is. You know, I've been having some conversations lately, and of course, observing the uh, national conversation. And, uh, you know, you can look at things through all these different lenses. You know, take the pandemic, for example, or the reactions, or the media, or politics, or all these things. And you can look at them as, uh, you know, science, or economics, or psychology, things like that. It's like a lot of people don't want to look at things from a psychological perspective. And uh, it's like, no, they're just going to hold on to this particular viewpoint. But anyway, this recent conversation I had with someone, uh, they were very, very science-minded, you know, and uh, don't have to go too far into what exactly we talked about, but ultimately came down to the point I had mentioned that uh, human beings are, you know, arguably, I suppose, the only, uh, only species on Earth capable of free will, you know, animals, nature, plants, everything else basically operate um, on instinct. And he said, nope, I'm mechanistic. I believe in, in the mechanistic view of the universe. And basically there is no free will. We all behave according to, you know, various factors. We're like machines. Really? Okay. Well, that's not true, but if you want to believe that, you know, go ahead. So, you know, you flip a coin, it's like, oh, well, guess heads. Oh, well, I could have guessed tails, but there's no way, you know, mechanic, mechanistic universe, you can't go back and change your choice or whatever. It's just, anyway, it gets absurd quickly, but... That's the kind of thing they like in science where things get to the point where they're so debatable, you know, quantum mechanics, things like that, and no one can agree on anything and can't be proved anyway. You know, you basically, you know, masturbate on a piece of paper for a while or whatever. Anyway, so to tie that together with this analogy of a coin, my the point of this talk today is basically to say that uh, science and religion are two sides of the same coin. So on the one hand, religion, oh, someone coming. Okay, maybe I should have videoed that. I just ran into a guy who, uh, proselytizing mood, telling me all about, uh, anyway, won't go into all that. But uh, there you go, thing about religion and science. Two sides of the same coin. So religion has the God, the uh, you know ultimate authority. Science has the scientific method. That's its ultimate authority. So no matter what you say, what, no matter what you do, no matter what the subject is, you can claim that, oh, well, we have the scientific method. Okay. Well, but then that sounds good in theory, but once you begin to look at how science is applied, by people, individuals with psychology, used to achieve fame, notoriety, profit, livelihoods, and everything else, that scientific method, yeah, it, um, it's true in theory, but uh, it's just like with religion. It's like God or Christ or Buddha or something. It's like, you know, tells you something. It's like, yeah, that might well be true. And then as soon as you start using it, applying it, trying to, you know, it gets distorted, it gets corrupt, it gets misused. So, uh, ultimately, what a lot of people are trying to do is create identities. And I've talked before about, you know, just picking up things that you happen to find lying around and sticking them to yourself here and there. Oh, I'm a Baptist, I'm a, you know, sports fan, I'm a political, you know, political party, partisan or whatever. And uh, when you get enough of those badges and decals stuck on, you go, oh, well, this is me, you know. It's 
It's like, oh, I'm scientific, this is me. Oh, I'm religious, so this is me. You know? And the funny thing about it all is, you know, scientific method. Science is basically, you can call it reductionism, basically continue. Oh, you're going to look at something. You look at the tree, let's chop it in little bits, you know. Let's chop the leaves up, chop them up, look at cells, chop the cells up, look at the DNA, look at all this stuff, and chop it all up, and oh, now we understand it, you know. Going and going and going, going in that direction, chop, chop, chop. I wind up at the quantum so-called level, which, uh, you know, oh, we're right there. We're almost there. We're almost understand it. We almost cracked the code. It's like, right. So, oh, here comes someone else. Hold on. A couple of folks on bicycles. I almost felt like telling preacher alert, preacher alert. Now that guy on there had the conversation with. So anyway, um, yeah, so reductionism, chopping things up in little bits. Um, kind of denies things because, you know, the leaf is not the tree. The tree is not the forest. You know, the forest is not the continent. The continent is not the planet. The planet is not the solar system. The solar system is not the galaxy. The galaxy is not the universe. You know, universe, the word itself, it's like unicycle, has one wheel. Universe, it's like there's one universe. That's one thing, all the same thing. Parts of the same thing, or just basically all the same fucking thing. Well, you can think about that, wrestle with that. I'm gonna turn around and uh, come to your own conclusions, you know. And, um, but that's the thing, what we're seeing now, the human experience, everything, all of it, technology, politics, uh, conflict, all the things that are going on, they're all, uh, all about the individual's sense of self, either alone or in groups, and, uh, how that plays out, and I am very glad that uh, I don't belong to any groups. It's a real, real sense of freedom not to have to do that. So anyway, I think that's about it. I haven't done any talks in a long time, and I probably are not going to be doing, am not going to be doing any more, because uh, I just basically don't feel a need to. So uh, anyway. Take it easy.